Hi, I'm Ashley Adamson, and today we're going to talk about trans visibility and being visible, the fear of being visible. Like, this is what this day is about. It's about celebrating being trans and being visibly trans. And I think the seed of the idea of this day is from the concept that we need to be visible. Because if we're not visible, then who is going to acknowledge us? Who is going to accept us? And how do we reduce the violence of our existence when we are around and we're not accepted? That last one is a little bit tricky, so let me rephrase that. By not creating the narrative and discussion around our existence, then when we do exist, we become ostracized for being so different that it becomes easy for us to be a target for being different. If someone hasn't done the work to think through things and to really process this in discussion with others, then in the wrong situation, someone could be triggered by not really doing the inner work and processing what it means to be trans and attack someone. And I think this is something that all of us trans people are so afraid of. I think uh, women are afraid of violence, but trans women in particular are even more afraid of violence because they're women, but also a lot of trans women do not pass. And um, I think this is particularly for trans women because a lot of trans men do pass because they can grow beards and testosterone will change their face. But I do want to speak on behalf for all trans people, which is the fear of being trans and being visibly trans in any space is always there. It just depends on what city you're in, what location you're in, and how safe you feel like you can be around your friends or who you're with. It's this ironic thing of by becoming more visible, all of us collectively can create more dialogue, more understanding, and hopefully more safety for more trans people. I remember speaking to my friend um, in Lithuania, and she was saying that four years ago when Pride first emerged, there were like protesters, there were like riot police, and it was like a really, really big thing. And it was like, everyone was talking about the downfall of society and all of that. Well, four years later, there's no riot police, there's no security like at that kind of level, and it's just a celebrated event. That pride and just being out and creating that conversation and showing that it's normal to just be LGBTQIA+, has helped create a narrative that it's not weird, it's not different, they're just regular people. And so trans visibility is our special day, right? It's our special day to say we're visible, we're here, we're normal, and we're not here to try and steal something from you or create the end of the world, <laughs> like some cast us to be. Um, what kind of weird stories have you heard about trans people and that narrative that's being discussed? I think my favorite is that we're trying to erase genders and that it would just be better if everyone was non-gendered and that everything's a shade of gray. and. I, you know, I don't know about you, but I actually like genders. I like the experience of them. I like gender roles. Now, that's a controversial topic, but I like gender roles because it gives you a, a constraint to kind of work in and play with. Now, we don't need to take on the traditional gender roles, but like I do like gender roles, um, kind of like role playing, <laughs> which I also like, but that's another topic. Um, but yeah, like, I just, this was kind of like brought on by uh, one of you that commented this, like there's this fear of violence and also like this kind of push to go stealth because of the fear of violence, which then celebrates passing. And so you kind of have this triad of the fear of not passing, uh, the desire to go stealth, and this concept of passing, which um, happens because you're stealth and so you avoid violence, but it also speaks to uh, beauty standards and cis normative beauty standards and how the trans women, and I spoke about this in another video, but trans women and you could say trans men that are traditionally beautiful and passing are the ones that get the lift, are the ones that are celebrated and are seen as kind of like exemplars 
of our culture, the trans culture and the trans community. Um, and so there's this kind of loop. You pass, you're safe, and you're celebrated if you pass. And it kind of creates this downward spiral internally for a lot of people that don't pass or that don't fit in in a certain way to the common beauty standards. There's a lot of non-binary people who are ostracized and get so much terrible hate for just being out there with their presentation of perhaps like a beard and like some makeup. And I've seen trans femme um, uh, people from kind of like across the spectrum of how they identify being attacked for breaking gender roles and boundaries in terms of aesthetics. So, you know, that I feel like that's kind of like the next evolution that trans visibility can really help move along is the non-binary and the um, non-gender conforming roles to make that visibility acceptable and clear as passable and more um, cis-normative aesthetics are of trans people are acknowledged, we can kind of like deepen this narrative and discussion uh, around just being a human and just being a regular person that wants to exist safely in society. I don't know, what do you think? What do you think this relationship is to visibility, to being trans, and how we celebrate Trans Day of Visibility? How do you um, celebrate your day of trans visibility? Do you paint your nails? Do you uh, sh like wear a beard? Do you like go out? Like, how do you express that? Um, I'd love to hear from you and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in another episode. Bye. Oh.